Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're very pleased to have a guest, Sheriff Mike Helpke with us. How are you, Sheriff? I'm great. How are you guys? Very good, thank good. you. As you know, Sheboygan County has 23 departments, a uh, number of very important programs and services, and one of our larger departments, and certainly one of the most important, is our law enforcement agency, the Sheriff's Department. Today, Sheriff Helmke is going to talk a little bit about the roles and responsibilities of the, of the Sheriff's Department and some of the new initiatives and, and things that Mike's been done during his tenure. Mike, please begin telling us a little bit about yourself and, and how long you've been Sheriff. Sure. Uh, I'm a native of Sheboygan County, born and raised in Plymouth. Uh, I am married to my wife, Ann. I have two adult children and uh, uh, have a newly born grandson. Very good. Uh, as far as professionally, I've been with the Sheriff's Department for 29 years. Uh, as you mentioned, I've just completed my first four-year term as Sheriff. I've worked in uh, just about every aspect of the Sheriff's Department in my career. And during your career, and obviously one of the benefits of being there for nearly 30 years is the tremendous experience you've gained, but what do you feel as Sheriff now are some of your primary challenges? Well, like every other county department and uh, any other governmental entity, budgets, uh, tax levy caps, and what impact uh, they have on our ability to provide the services that the community has come to expect is definitely a challenge. Uh, jail overcrowding, uh, although we're not pressed with that issue right now, is something we certainly have to be proactive and st strategically plan for in the future, and if there are alternatives to incarceration as opposed to incarceration. Um, we have a couple of uh, communication projects that are currently um, in the process of cell cellular 911, which is a program or technology that will allow our communication center to uh, triangularly locate uh, the origin of a cell caller. Uh, right now, if somebody uses their cell phone to call 911, um, we have to get a location verbally from them in order to determine where they are. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people who have cell phones are mobile and they may not know, and that sometimes creates uh, concerns or issues as to where they are and uh, you know how it is that we're going to send resources to them. And another uh, pro uh, program that we have going on in our communications area is radio frequency rebanding, which to many people it's really a, a non-issue, but uh, to us it's, uh, it's an initiative on the part of Sprint Nextel in their, uh, I guess, desire to get additional uh, radio bandwidth, uh, which is going to require law enforcement um, entities on an 800 megahertz radio system to narrow their band. Uh, what that means to us in Sheboygan County is that we have 1,500, approximately 1,500 radio users, individual radio users on our 800 megahertz radio system, and it'll require all of those radios to be reprogrammed. So obviously challenges associated with law enforcement in general, but the you know possible crowding in the future at our detention center, communications, as you said, whether it's 911 and being able to respond to people or just communications with the law enforcement agencies throughout the county. Uh, as you said, four-year tenure, as you look back at those four years, what are some of the areas that you really feel you've made some accomplishments, made some strides? Well, uh, reorganization of the upper administration of the Sheriff's Department was a, something that I had campaigned on and we were successful in doing that. We've actually uh, streamlined our administrative uh, hierarchy at the Sheriff's Department, um, thereby being able to provide um, resources at a, at a lower level. Of course, with that uh, comes more responsibilities for the, the people in those upper administrative positions, but that seemed to have, have worked out well. Um, I've reinstituted the canine program. Uh, we, mm -hmm. we have one canine actively on duty and a second one uh, that'll be coming soon, so I've, I was proud of that accomplishment. I actually reinstated the special deputies program, um, not in the way that people may have remembered it in the past, but through a unique partnership that uh, our department has developed with the Sheboygan Area School District where we're providing um, school security officers to supplement the Sheboygan Police Department liaison officers in some of the Sheboygan uh, schools. Uh, these officers are recently retired law enforcement officers um, who I have granted through my uh, constitutional authority as sheriff uh, sp special deputy status. 
So uh, that, that program has, uh, is relatively new, but is working out very well and is unique. I believe we're probably the only de uh, department and school district partnership in the state. And right now with um, school safety and security issues being a concern, I think we're actually ahead of the curve when, uh, with this program. So I'm, I'm really proud of that accomplishment. Uh, we continue to contract with the State Department of Corrections to um, board inmates, state inmates in our county jail. As you know, the state prison system is overcrowded and uh, thereby they, they need uh, alternative places to place these state prisoners and we've been contracting with them for four years now. Uh, that's generated a significant amount of positive revenue for our department. Speaking of corrections, our rehabilitative programs in our correctional facility I think stand out amongst other county jails in, in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, we have a partnership with LTC where educational um, opportunities are provided to our jail inmates. We have a chaplaincy program that is actually um, spun out into a uh, mentoring program where there are people in the community that are willing to um, mentor inmates who maybe have been re recently released from jail and maybe having issues or concerns that they can utilize these resources to help them stay on track so that they don't uh, come back to our jail. Our Huber Law and AODA programs in jail are I think second to none in the state so I'm, I'm proud of those rehab rehabilitative programs that we're able to offer. In fact today we're having our jail uh, inspection by the Department of Corrections and <clears> I had been um, down to the detention center for a good part of the morning this morning and the gentleman who was doing the in jail inspection uh, had actually highlighted uh, you know, some of those positive things that we're doing in our corrections facility. Public relations and accessibility to the public personally, that was uh, something I campaigned on and although it keeps me incredibly busy, um, I enjoy that. I enjoy getting out and into the community and talking to people, telling them, you know, uh, who we are, what we do and how it impacts them as a department. As you talked about those accomplishments, you really touched on some different areas that are contained in the Sheriff's Department. Please give our viewers a feel for, well, how is the Sheriff's Department organized and, and what are the primary roles and responsibilities of a Sheriff's Department? Sure. Um, a Sheriff's Department is different than uh, municipal law enforcement agencies in that the Sheriff uh, goes back to, you know, the days that the country was being formed. It was really their first uh, form of law enforcement. The term Sheriff actually comes from the uh, English term of sheriff and a constable and that and you know that part of our heritage came from England and came here. Uh, but uh, sheriff's departments are different in that they're required to not only you know obviously provide the law enforcement services that people immediately think of when they think of law enforcement or police departments but we run the jail as I had uh, mentioned before. That's a huge part of our operation. Half of our uh, human resources, half of our budget is dedicated to that. Uh, incredible responsibility, could be incredible liability there when you're talking about the types of situations we're dealing with in corrections. The sheriff is also required to provide to, uh, courtroom and courthouse security. So we have bailiffs in the jail if anybody's seen TV. Uh, those law enforcement officials that are in jail are, are sheriff's deputies. The sheriff is also constitutionally required to provide a civil process uh, division within the sheriff's department. That's a division where um, we have actually have uh, full-time full deputies that do nothing but serve civil process, legal papers, summonses, um, and all kinds of small claims, uh, evictions, and all kinds of different things that uh, I guess keep our legal system uh, moving. So that's. Uh, that's uh, another responsibility. In addition to that, the sheriff is required to provide a um, water rescue or recovery unit for the jurisdiction um, that they're responsible for. And we do that a number of different ways. We actually have a combined city county dive team and we have some very uh, good partnerships with fire departments in terms of uh, uh, water rescue capabilities. Um, the sheriff is also required to regulate the transportation and storage of explosives in their, their county um, and typically we do that through our emergency management uh, person who is under our table of organization. Uh, we have four divisions at the Sheriff's Department, a patrol division. Uh, their responsibilities are obviously patrol handling, uh, calls for service, accident investigations. Uh, we have a bicycle patrol unit that basically is made up of deputies. Uh, we do um, 
COUNTERACT, which is similar to DARE, a drug education program in the elementary schools. Uh, that's done through our patrol division. We also have a triad uh, partnership with senior citizens in the county where uh, law enforcement and seniors have teamed up to uh, provide information about uh, crime and uh, the fear of crime and how that would impact senior citizens. We have a criminal investigations division, that's our second division, that obviously in investigates crimes. Um, these detectives are trained specifically to handle specialized investigations, whether it be computer crime, sexual assaults, um, and just a myriad of different types of specialties that go into criminal investigations. I mentioned our, um, our corrections division, which is obviously responsible for the incarceration of uh, inmates uh, from, our, from our county courts. And we have a uh, support services division that is in, in charge of uh, our emergency management that I had mentioned just previous communications division and our training. So those are the four different divisions and some of the responsibilities that go with them. Uh, obviously, I've had a chance to not only interact with you, but some of your staff and at the administration level throughout, and I just am always so impressed with the professionalism of the of the officers and, and the administrators as a whole. And as we were just talking about a little bit uh, before the program started, my son is taking voter safety, which is another uh, service that the Sheriff's Department obviously provides is and you mentioned that was a, a partnership through the Department of Natural Resources. Yes, um, we get reimbursement from the Department of uh, Natural Resources to do boulder safety. Um, not sure if we do any, I don't think we do any type of snowmobile or firearm safety programs, but there could be opportunities for them. We've done the boulder safety for quite some time. Uh, Likewise, we, uh, through different state initiatives, whether it be through the Department of Transportation or uh, other departments, we do specialize details, traffic enforcement, saturated patrols for OWI, operating while intoxicated, or seat belt enforcement, speed waves, uh, where uh, you know we might get information from the State Department of Transportation that there's high accident rates in certain areas, so they may provide uh, funding to uh, do um, additional radar enforcement or traffic enforcement in those areas. So that that's positive, proactive uh, law enforcement partnerships that we develop through state agencies. So in total, how many employees do you have and approximately what is your total budget? We have uh, 180 employees, give or take a few, on any given day. Uh, and a uh, 15, just over a $15 million budget in 2007. Very good. Sure, from time to time your department gets involved in special events, we have the senior golf tournament coming up this summer. How do you prepare for that type of activity? Well, planning obviously uh, is, is critical when you're planning for any event, but uh, event of that scope, uh, pre-planning is, is very, very important. Uh, fortunately, uh, the, the senior golf outing this year, we have a perfect template from the 2004 PGA Championship that was held at Whistling Straits that all we really have to do is modify to uh, for this particular event, um, you know, there'll be some modifications made based on what it is that uh, the expectations are for for uh, the venue, um, the um, citizens, uh, the community, and those types of things. But we have, you know, we have a perfect template. So planning is obviously uh, very important. And with that planning and with these larger events, we obviously have to work with several different departments different governmental entities, um, several different departments within the state government and Sheboygan County government, local townships and municipalities. So uh, being able to get together, communicate and plan is, is what's critical to make these things successful. There also are some recurring events such as Road America and the county fair that you have to prepare for. How is that preparation different? Well, you know, Road America and the county fair have been around for so long that mm -hmm. uh, it's almost second nature in, in, in how we've done that. And in terms of the county fair, uh, uh, the, there has been a change over the years in that um, the fair association has taken a more of an active role in providing security on the grounds itself. So other than traffic and, um, and some of our officers being involved in off-duty uh, uh, security employment through them, that pretty much runs itself. Road America, over the years from the time that I started to, to before the time I started, 
in, in the 60s and early 70s when there used to be a lot of problems out there for some of the people that might have remembered uh, almost like riot conditions to the time that I started there to now has really de-escalated in size, scope, and nature of problems. So again, uh, that is uh, basically a traffic responsibility for us and Road America has its own internal security there, so that's not much of a problem. Uh, the uh, PGA and, and what uh, uh, is coming to Sheboygan County, you know, again, I think we need to have a, a coordinated uh, effort in response to these things, and um, that that is unique compared to the other events that we host in the county. So, um, I believe that um, as we continue to have these events there, uh, you know, that'll become somewhat second nature too. Does the county and your department gain any additional revenue for doing this additional security or work? In 2004, we had an agreement with the PGA in the state of Wisconsin to cover our cost. Uh, I was uh, actually transitioning into the position of sheriff when the planning had already been started for that, and that was my initial concern that, hey, look, I'm not really interested in making money off of this event, but I certainly don't want this event to be supported by taxpayer dollars. So um, we were able to uh, work out an agreement and uh, all parties came through and uh, lived up to their end of the agreement and we offset our cost of our personnel at that event. Uh, the same uh, holds true for this event here. So in terms of additional revenue, no, but we're we're providing a service, um, we're providing presence, we're providing security and traffic control um, at, a, at no cost to the taxpayers of Sheboygan County. Your department does offer additional services to municipalities within the county. Could you explain how that works? Yes, um, we for a number of years have contracted with uh, several villages and townships. Uh, we have the village of Random Lake, the village of Cedar Grove, the village of Oostburg, the town of uh, Holland, the town of Sheboygan, and just recently, um, the village of Glenbula has contracted some additional law enforcement uh, hours from us. Uh, these contracts work like this. Uh, we uh, provide specialized law enforcement services to their communities, whereby we will enforce their uh, village and town ordinances uh, specific to their villages and towns. In the Sheriff's Department, we, we don't come into each of the 17 or so different townships there are, and gosh only knows how many villages there are uh, in enforce individual ordinances. We have countywide ordinances that are parallel many of those local ordinances, uh, but if we're contracted with them, we will enforce their specific ordinances. In addition to that, if they have um, special events or special concerns in their community, we will make it a point to, to address those. So. Uh, it's, it's beneficial to them in, in the terms that they get specialized enforcement and we can be there to provide them uh, uh, presence at a special event. And um, obviously it's good for us in that it's not a huge revenue generating source, but again, it, it's kind of a, it, it offsets our cost and it provides what's important to me is law enforcement presence in these communities. And then finally, are there any trends in law enforcement, any particular law enforcement problems in Sheboygan County that are emerging? Well, I don't think Sheboygan County is unique to, uh, from any other uh, part of the country. Uh, something that we obviously have to stay on top of is drug and gang uh, issues and uh, criminal activity that could be associated with that. Um, methamphetamine is moving across the country and um, is starting to crop up in our part of the state. Um, we've had a couple of meth labs that we've had to close down and, and they're unique in that uh, not only is meth a very addictive and a, uh, a very hard uh, substance for a person to be rehabilitated off of, but the environmental mess that the manufacturer of this, manufacturer of meth causes is, is also a huge concern. There's been a lot of talk of late with the uh, police department, the city of police, city of Sheboygan building a new police department and with that discussion has come well what opportunities are for the, the Sheriff's Department and the City of Sheboygan Police Department to interact and coordinate or share services more and before you touch on that I know and certainly you know a lot of good work has happened in the past where 
the Sheriff's Department and the City of Sheboygan Police Department have been sharing services or resources. Please touch on that a little bit and give our viewers a better flavor for it. Sure. We've had a great partnership, not only with the Sheboygan Police Department, but with all the other uh, municipal law enforcement agencies in the, in the county. Uh, and really, that's no credit to, to me. That's been something that's been going on for, for a long time here. Um, with the advent of the 800 megahertz radio system that I referred to, and I'm not sure the inception date, maybe the chairman knows, uh, but that was really a, a technology that, that was the backbone to even draw us municipal users together even more, whereby our radio system, our 800 megahertz radio system is the backbone for all uh, municipal law enforcement, transit, and all of the other users out there. So yeah, we have a common radio frequency. Instead of having, you know, uh, half a dozen or a dozen separate uh, radio frequencies, we have one which ultimately probably saves the taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars in the end. Um, a records management system that law enforcement shares with each other is accessible for all the users that are in that system. So. Uh, the availability for one law enforcement agency and or officer on the street to uh, obtain information countywide on an individual or an incident is, is right at their fingertips. That's been a, a great initiative. We share photograph and fingerprint uh, information with the other law enforcement agencies via computer technology. Um, our MEG unit, our drug unit, um, has been around for a long time. That is a cooperative effort of law enforcement throughout the county to staff and to work on uh, drug issues in the county. Um, we have an indoor range at the Sheriff's Department, uh, which has just uh, recently been refurbished. Uh, that is open to all law enforcement agencies, including uh, the Coast Guard and federal law enforcement that may be stationed in Sheboygan County for their use. Uh, training, we share training resources, training officers, uh, back and forth on a, on a regular basis, accident reconstruction. Uh, what that is is uh, having special uh, officers specially trained in uh, accident dynamics and being able to actually reconstruct an accident and we use those in a serious injury or f fatal accidents to reconstruct construct an accident and determine to the best of our scientific ability what caused that accident. Um, the uh, Sheboygan County Most Wanted that uh, many people may be familiar with in the newspaper is a uh, joint effort of all law enforcement in the county to get those names of those 10 most wanted in there. I mentioned our dive team earlier. That is a uh, split uh, or shared uh, makeup of that team with uh, city and county uh, law, uh, law enforcement officers. And uh, technology in general. Uh, obviously some of this technology for accident reconstruction, crime investigation is very expensive. The ability to share that with our counterparts across the county uh, it just, just saves money. Uh, it only makes sense that uh, with these high priced pieces of equipment that aren't used that often that they should be pooled and shared together. So we strive to continue to do that. Our Crime Stoppers uh, line uh, is, a, is really a private public venture, but uh, all law enforcement uh, in Sheboygan County contributes to that uh, Crime Stoppers and we have a Crime Stoppers number that people can call in uh, to report crimes and remain anonymous and be eligible for, for a cash reward. number of examples I know you could continue to go on and, and it's just good to hear because again people are always saying units of government need to be working together, sharing services, sharing resources and the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department has a long and healthy track record of working with the other municipalities and, and the other law enforcement agencies throughout Sheboygan County. With that said, as you know, certainly as Chairman Gehring knows, we're always striving to do more. We're always striving to, to improve upon that. Do you see any opportunities on the horizon? The combined dispatch um, issue is, is being researched and evaluated again. Uh, that's an opportunity. Um, I don't know what the city police department has in their plans in terms of uh, training rooms and um, specialized maybe like interview rooms or things like that that we could utilize. Um, you know there are a myriad of different um, opportunities that, that are available but again I think that um, and we take this for granted so often here I think locally that um, because I see this, I don't see the same sharing in when I go across the state and meet with other sheriffs and other municipalities that we are really 
uh, head and shoulders above the rest in what we're already doing with our counterparts. Uh, but depending on you know the size and scope of this police department, I am sure there will be opportunities to share. Uh, and I'm, I'm just uh, eagerly awaiting to see what comes of that. You mentioned earlier that the 800 megahertz really, the radio system really helped bring a lot of the units of uh, law enforcement together. And that was back, I think, just when I started in 1999, when we started formulating that and making that happen. But certainly, sure, if I don't want you to sell yourself short, because it starts with personalities and people being willing to work together and overcome turf and all the other things that enter into those discussions. And you've cer certainly led by example, and I know you've been open to exploring opportunities. And you just mentioned one that of late is getting a little bit more attention, and that is joint dispatch. The, the uh, city of Sheboygan is looking at building this new police department. We have a city county shared services committee that is exploring future opportunities, whether it's in law enforcement or other areas. And uh, you have at least one member of your staff who's participating on a subcommittee exploring this. Mm -hmm. At this point, what's the status of that, that discussion? Sure. Uh, the uh, combined dispatch uh, status is uh, the subcommittee that you had mentioned is researching the cost, um, staffing levels, equipment that would be needed in order to, to combine this. And they've had several meetings, and eventually they'll make a recommendation back to the shared services committee as to what they they found out conceptually i think it's a it's a great idea it's a great opportunity um it's not it's not uncommon um, in other parts of wisconsin uh but uh like anything my concern is is that it's it's done properly from the get-go that's too important of a entity or a responsibility that they provide uh, to, to um, not do it. It's the lifeline for citizens out there who are calling in for, for help. It's the lifeline for our officers. It's really the heart and soul of, uh, of, a, of an emergency agency is, is that communication standpoint, uh, aspect of it. So it, it's got to be done. It's got to be done right. And I think it can be very successful. Will it be done um, at a savings initially? Maybe not, but I think over, over time you'll gain efficiencies um, and a single point of contact and so many other things that will avail itself that um, it would uh, save money in the future. And in the end, if a recommendation is to pr pursue it, of course, the dollars and cents will become a big issue because as you said, if we can show that in fact it would make for a more efficient approach but it's as costly as we have now or more costly. Uh, the County Board, of, County Board of Supervisors, the Sheboygan Common Council, everyone's subject to levy restraints and other pressures by the community to keep taxes in check, and that obviously will bear on that decision as well. Yes. I know we only have a minute left, and I just want to thank you, Sheriff Helmke, for your time today. Covered a lot of ground, gave a lot of good information, and, and, and as you know, and I know I speak for Chairman Bill Gehring as well, you've been a pleasure to work with during your t tenure, and I. I look forward to that going on for some time into the future. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Next month, we're going to have Gene Stark, the administrator from Sunny Ridge here. As you know, there's also been discussions of late about the status of the Sunny Ridge Healthcare Center and being privatized, a lot going on there. And Gene Stark, the administrator, will be here to talk a little bit about what's going on and the transition that will happen in the future. So until then, on behalf of the Sheboygan County Board, Chairman Bill Gehring, thank you for joining us.